Chapter 24. Name, Naomi Erlinger. What were we supposed to think? First Cap gets crushed by the entire football team and the coaches practically have to carry him to the nurse? Three hours later, he gets decked by Daryl Pennyfield? I'm never speaking to him again. Next thing you know, he's being taken away by ambulance. I hadn't seen him since. Okay, for the first couple of days, nobody was surprised Cap was absent from school. He was hurting. Who wouldn't be? Then the weekend, the Condors game on Saturday... Well, who could blame him for blowing off that event after what the team did to him? Lena only went because she's a cheerleader, and she said it was the lousiest turnout she'd ever seen for a Condor Raiders matchup. Sea Average and Ryancliff battled to a 3-3 tie in case you're one of the few who cares. Serves those jerks right. Anyway, I figured I'd catch Cap on Monday. Wrong. And by Tuesday, I was getting worried. It was almost a full week since anybody had laid eyes on the 8th grade president. Okay, I was extra upset because Cap was extra special to me. But everyone was talking about it. You'd see a bunch of kids in a huddle in the hall, and you didn't have to eavesdrop to figure out the topic of conversation. Where was Cap? Why hadn't he come back yet? Could he be really hurt? The custodians were still trying to scrub his blood off the terrazzo in the corridor when the big punch had been thrown. He must have been in bad shape. What else would keep him away from what was brewing between the two of us? to be continued. I meant that. This wasn't another shallow middle school crush like the one I'd had on Zach. This was a relationship. And besides, the Halloween dance was on Saturday night. Cap had to realize we could never pull it off without him. When I asked Mrs. Vogel, my homeroom teacher, she replied, I don't think Cap Anderson is a student here anymore. What? She might as well have told me that the school was slated for demolition with all of us inside it. Of course he's a student. He's the eighth grade president. She looked uncomfortable. I don't want to argue with you, Naomi. I've told you what I know. I'm going to ask Mr. Kasigi, I stormed. Who do you think told me, she said, not unkindly. Mr. Kasigi held an emergency staff meeting to bring all the teachers up to speed. I don't recommend that you mention Cap's name to him. He gets very emotional on the subject. But the dance is Saturday night. Who's going to run it if Cap isn't here? She wouldn't look me in the eye. The announcement is going to be made at lunch. The dance has been cancelled. I felt like I had been hit in the stomach with a two-by-four. You can't be serious. She was serious enough to kick me out of the class. By the time I staggered into the hall, the first of the notices was being posted. Due to unfortunate circumstances, the Halloween dance has been called off. As you can imagine, the chaos was rising. There was only one middle school in Claveridge. Our neighbors had all gone here, our older brothers and sisters. A lot of our parents had attended Sea Average. There had always been a Halloween dance. They can't cancel the dance, wailed Tiffany Peterson. It's a tradition. They can and they just did, Lena said darkly. Kasigi's such a jerk. He spends the week partying at some fancy convention and then comes home to pull the plug on anybody else's fun, else having fun. But it's our trademark, Tiffany persisted. The elementaries have holiday pageants. The high school has homecoming. Halloween is our thing. How can Mr. Kasigi do this to us? Zach put his two cents in. Kasigi isn't the problem. Since when do the teachers have much to say about what goes on in this place? You're ignoring the obvious. The dance got cancelled because Cap screwed up somehow. How do you figure that? asked Lena. The details are all set and Cap isn't even here. Exactly, Zach agreed. It's his party. Where is he? I jumped on that so fast the wind should have knocked him over. Where is he? It was your precious football team that tried to put him through the crust of the earth. And don't forget the punch that leveled him was meant for you. He shrugged. It's not my fault Pennyfield's gone over the edge. Nothing's ever your fault, I snarled at him. When you couldn't use Cap as your clown, you tried to use him as your crash test jump dummy. I've had it up to here with you, Zack Powers. You and I are through. As rattled as I was, I took some satisfaction in the expression of total shock on his face. I laid it on even thicker. Did it ever occur to you that unfortunate circumstances might not just be a lame excuse? What if it means... What if it means... Well, what could it mean? No one had the guts to say it, but it was in everybody's thoughts. Stone-faced Mr. Kasigi couldn't hear Cap's name because it made him too emotional. What unfortunate circumstance could cause that? Add in the fact that Cap had dropped off the face of the earth. Let's get to the bottom of this, Lena decided. 
Good old Lena. She was a tough nut. But she could be so sensible sometimes. Plus she had tons of connections, and everybody seemed to owe her a favor. Phil Ruiz helped out around the office, so Lena made it his job to get into student records and pull Cap's file. He snuck the folder out in the kangaroo pocket of his hooded sweatshirt and showed it to us in the stairwell by the gym. This is what it contained. Nothing. No papers, no grades, no test scores, not, not so much as an index card. How is it possible to have an empty file? Lena demanded. It isn't, Phil told her. It should have transcripts, transfer forms from his old school and emergency contact information. That's what we need, I exploded. We have to contact him. This is an emergency. Don't worry, said Lena said darkly. Somebody must have his address. I rode the same bus as Cap, but my stop was before his, so I had no idea where he got off. We couldn't find anyone who knew which house was his. Then at last, a breakthrough. Olivia Weintraub had a brother who had once dated a girl named Sophie Donnelly. So he had, so he had talked about a long-haired 60s type stain with the Donnellys. It could only have been Cap. Lena and I took Cap's bus after school and found the right house, a well-kept split level on a quiet side street. Just the thought that he lived and slept here made me feel warm inside. I was positive we had the right place. This is it, Lena confirmed. 191 Rockcrest. As we marched up the walk to the front door, the window of a car parked in the driveway wisp the, the window of a car parked in the driveway whispered open. A very pretty high school girl leaned out and called. Something I can do for you? Does Cap Anderson live here? I asked anxiously. No. She started to roll the window up again. The passenger door opened and an older lady got out. You girls are too late. Cap is no longer at this address. You could hear she was choosing her words carefully. Well, Lena persisted, can you tell us where he is now? I'm afraid that's not possible. But why, I wailed. We really need to talk to him. The daughter lowered her window again. My driving test is the day after tomorrow. We're busy. Sorry, girls, the mother added. I'm sure you're just friends with the best of intentions, but a lot of things have happened that I'm not at liberty to talk about. She got back inside and shut the door. Can you just give us his phone number, I begged. The teenager gave me an odd smile. Where he is, they don't have a phone. They drove away, leaving us stranded on their doorstep. Stunned, finally Lena spoke, her voice subdued. I think I might know why we can't find Cap. Meltdown, that's the only word to describe my state of mind. For months I had been wandering the desert, throwing myself at that undeserving creep, Zack. Now finally, I understood my true feelings. And it was too late. Up until that moment, no one had dared to speak the awful words out loud, but I couldn't keep them bottled inside me any longer. What if he's dead? 